The oceans have been home to some of the largest animals to ever roam this planet. And without a doubt, the latest and biggest of these ocean-going organisms have been the whales. Producing many ocean-going giants for millions of years. In fact, we live alongside the largest animal to ever exist, the blue whale. Or so we once thought. A brand new, grand-sized discovery may change that very idea. An animal that was nearly twice the weight of the modern blue whale, and potentially the largest animal to ever have been discovered thus far, called Perusitis colossus. Perusitis was a massive bacillosaurid whale from what is now Peru, having been excavated from the locality called the Paracas Formation. Hence its genus name, Perusitis, meaning Peru whale. Together with its species name, Perusitis colossus, it's a title that truly encompasses how colossal a discovery this animal was. Perusitis was unlike any modern whale alive today belonging to an extinct lineage of tooth whales called the Bacillosaurids, a group of raptorial whales with almost serpentine bodies, and tiny hind limbs, relics from their land-dwelling ancestors. This group hails from the Eocene Epoch, with Perusitis specifically living approximately 37 to 39 million years ago. The late Eocene was an age where mammals started to make it big, a statement that couldn't be truer for what could be the largest mammals of them all, the whales. Even this early in their evolutionary history, whales grew to massive proportions, like Bacillosaurus, a gigantic predatory whale over 55 feet or 17 meters long and weighed an estimated 60 tons, a size that was achieved within the span of only 5 million years, practically the blink of an eye in geological time. So I bet you're wondering, why were whales able to get so big so quickly? You see, after the end of the Mesozoic, or the Age of Reptiles, the large non-avian dinosaurs weren't the only animals to go extinct, but the large marine reptiles that coexisted with them. And as a result, there wasn't much in the way of large marine animals other than sharks and sea turtles. This afforded new opportunities for new animals to take over. And as many mammals began to return to the water, many took advantages of the new opportunities left open. Primitive whales were amongst the first of many mammals to take these roles. With little in the way of competition, it allowed them to spread, diversify, and above all, supersize in this brave new world. Perusitis itself is an outstanding example of such a feat, growing to an estimated 65 feet or 20 meters long with a weight estimation reaching in the estimates of 340 tons, nearly twice the weight of the modern blue whale, the animal that once held the title for largest known ever. As stated by the authors that described Perusitis, it was a whale that pushed the upper limits of skeletal mass in mammals. That being said, while it's certainly an exciting possibility for a prehistoric whale to be larger than a blue whale, it's an estimation that is anything but 100% certain. Weight estimates of extinct animals can be tricky, especially since most of the time all we have of these long dead organisms are fossilized remains. To make things more complicated, it's rare to even find articulated skeletons of animals from deep time, and are often fragmentary. Pedocetus itself is known only from a fragmentary specimen, with only a few vertebrae, some ribs, and limb bones being known from this whale. We don't even have the skull! And as a result of these remains being like this, it makes size estimates rather... fluid, and subsequently are often subject to change over the years of analysis. So who knows, maybe the blue whale is the biggest animal to ever exist. For now, that's the question that's going to be answered sometime later. That being said, what the blue whale and Perusitis do have in common truly makes them special. The phenomenon of gigantism. Ocean gigantism has been fairly common throughout our natural history. And it's thought that animals that develop these large sizes often do so for the advantages of going longer periods without food or nutrients. There's a good reason why the oceans and seas are called deserts of water. 
considering at times these large bodies of water can be very expansive, with little signs of food for miles. And these large sizes allow certain animals to go longer without nutrition as they navigate and migrate these waters. This is often coupled with being relatively slow swimmers in many of these large animals, often opting to be cruisers in order to save energy, something suggestive of Parasitus' own anatomy. Large sizes and cetaceans, however, are often indicative of another adaptation, diving. It's thought that larger bodies and bacillosaurs like Parasitus may have allowed for extended periods of diving, which would have allowed these whales prolonged time skimming the bottom of the shallow seas they call their home. This, in part, is due to the substantially dense bones of Parasitus. You see, bacillosaurids weren't open ocean or deep sea specialists like their modern cousins. Instead, they preferred warmer, relatively shallow coastal waters. But what makes bacillosaurs truly specialized for these shallow waters, and in turn, what makes Pedocetus so heavy, are incredibly dense bones. Such dense bones are actually fairly common in primitive whales like bacillosaurids. In fact, it's characteristic to their group. However, another group of mammals are also well known for their own dense bones, Cyrenians. Sirenians, like dugongs and manatees, have incredibly dense bones for ballast, in order to control buoyancy. In fact, Pedusitis itself has a body fairly convergent to that of manatees, including a large ribcage that would have given Pedusitis a similar blimp-like appearance. Despite how dense these bones are, Pedusitis was quite maneuverable for its size. Most notably, it had a substantially wide range of ventral flexion, aka a very flexible, very broad downstroke of its tail. This flexion in particular would have allowed Perusitis to undulate its body with incredible power, which was necessary considering the animal was a giant sea zeppelin, and it used this locomotion to push itself across the seabed as it foraged for food. But what would an animal this big eat? The fragmentary nature of Pedusitis' holotype or original specimen has only made it more difficult to uncover the true nature of this ancient whale's diet. However, based on what we do have, from the remains of the original specimen, to the fossils of its closest kin, and modern day animals for reference, it gives us some clues that allow us to piece together what this ancient whale's lifestyle would have been like. As mentioned before, Pedusitis was a whale that was built like a fairly large serpentine serenian, and several hypotheses have come about from this interesting anatomy. In particular, this whale's diet. This was a fairly large animal, with a fairly low swimming speed, that had high demands for its size, and it's likely that it would have needed high quantities of low energy or low cost food items. Pedusitis' similarities with Cyrenians has presented the possibility that this whale could have been an herbivore, feeding on sea grasses and vegetation along the seabeds of their localities. However, while it's certainly possible, it isn't necessarily likely as bacillosaurs and whales as a whole have always leaned towards a more carnivorous or at the very least planktivorous diet. Instead, it was suggested that Pedusitis was more of a carnivorous bottom feeder, foraging on mollusks, small animals, and carrion, possibly scraping the seabed to scare smaller bottom feeders from beneath the sands, similar to how modern tooth whales hunt stingrays and other benthic animals. That's not to say Pedocetus couldn't have been an herbivore, so much that it is just unlikely. Whales themselves are a fairly diverse group with each species having their own dietary quirks. Baleen whales like the blue whale are some of the most massive animals to ever exist, and yet supplement themselves on a diet of plankton, krill, and small fish. Orcas are some of the most raptorial predators in the oceans, 
able to take on sea mammals, sharks, and even large whales. And yet, some wild populations only eat fish. Given how diverse the diets of whales are, it's certainly not outside of the realm of possibility that Pedocetus itself would have resorted to its own unique diet to supplement its own unique size. If Pedocetus did turn out to be an herbivore, it would not only make the whale the heaviest animal ever known, but the first and only herbivorous whale known thus far. A truly unique characteristic for a truly gigantic animal. Only time will tell what the future holds for this ancient whale, as we continue to learn more about this mysterious cetacean. What is certain, however, is that Pedocetus is an outstanding example of the diversity of whales, and how even in the ancient past, they truly tested the upper limits of gigantic proportions.